morning and welcome, welcome to Matt Mayer on Air. Jane Matt Mayer, Greg Bach, and Calvin Butenoff coming to you live from our studio in downtown Waukesha. You can always join us. You can call. You can text. Same number, 855-752-4842. Leave a comment if you're watching on the live stream on Facebook, YouTube, and what used to be Twitter. Tomorrow is primary election day. Make sure you vote. Go to myvote.wi.gov. You can take a look at the ballot. There are going to be different races depending upon where you are in the state. Mm -hmm. But what will be on everyone's ballot are two constitutional amendments. Robin Voss tells you to vote yes. (laughs) I think that's something. Do you want to give Robin Voss more power? Do you want to do what Robin Voss wants? Yeah. Think about that. I mean, no, I don't want to. That's fine. I will be voting no tomorrow. You already voted. I already voted. You're a good guy. And I'll tell you, I voted no. Be a voter. Regardless, be a voter. MyVote.wi.gov. Coming up after the 1130 news, we are going to talk about education in Wisconsin. Sachin Chetta with the Office of the State Superintendent joining us at 1133. We'll wrap up the show with a little Olympics roundup. But I wanted to kick off this hour. There's just so much sometimes, Greg. Mm -hmm. We just can't get around to every single thing. Uh, You pointed this out to me last week about camouflage. Now that the <laughs> yeah. Paris Walls merch has been unveiled. I'm really wanting to buy that hat. It's Well, you can buy what you want. I know. We can? Sure. Oh, sweet. Calvin, you want one too? They're 40 bucks. I would take one, but I'm pretty sure they're sold out. No, they're not. They're on pre-order. They're not even out yet. Don't you ruin my dreams. Oh, I stand corrected. <laughs> Check it's it a, out. It's a, it's a camouflage Harris Walls yeah. cap. Very simple. Very to the point. A lot of people wear camo. People who hunt, even people who don't hunt, yeah, wear camouflage. And Fox, fo- fake news, faux news, <laughs> is freaking out about this. I know. You were I, the one who found this. I, I don't know if you know this, Jane, but uh, Fox and all their friends, uh, they own camouflage. Do they? Yeah. It's, it's their it's, it's their realm? Yeah. They could, they, yeah they get, it's, it belongs to them. No one else can have it. And camouflage is all there. So, Tim Walls, shame on you for not wanting to be seen in the woods with a hat on and wearing camouflage. So, they're accusing Democrats of co-opting camo. Yeah, they're trying. The, the, the whole thing is like, you know, ca- you know, if I wear, like, if I wear, you, know, you see what I look like right now. I'm wearing a t-shirt and shorts. I look like, you know... A weak need soy boy liberal right now. But once I throw that camouflage hat on, I'm a man. <laughs> and let me tell you something, Jane. The GOP owns that look because they're full of menly, manly men. So the moment that someone supports Tim Walls and Kamala Harris, they wear camo. Well, that's infringement. Tim Walls is a hunter. I didn't know that. He is a hunter. <laughs> He's got, tur- I mean, he hunts turkeys and yeah. pheasants and he was a sharpshooter. And yeah. so I, I think Democrats can have camo. I think so too. And, and this is just a further indictment on the fact that they literally have nothing to talk about. They're, they're trying really hard. And I don't even mean like, oh, they can't even like the policies and whatnot. It's like, it's like they have nothing to talk about on their shows. They're talking about nothing. Or they're, or they're reinforcing Donald Trump's delusional thoughts about yes, the Kamala Harris crowds that are turning out in the thousands are all AI generated. Um, yes, Calvin. I was going to say, well, camouflage over the last like two or three years, especially, has been kind of having its moment in yeah. like streetwear. Yep. As far as just like being fashionable, and also the hat. I don't think they've confirmed this, but it's pretty clear to a lot of people on the internet that it's inspired by the merchandise of pop star Chapel Roan. She has a hat that's very similar, but it says Midwest Princess on it. Oh, I love that. (laughs) I didn't know that, and I love that even more. Maybe I really want to buy the hat. It's just it's forty dollars, and that's a lot of money. We can talk about that. Okay. Uh, I just I just find it hilarious that it's like no, you can't wear it. It's ours. What? No, no, and Calvin, you're absolutely right. Right, like the Carhartt look is in. Everyone wants to be a cowboy, but no one lives on a farm. And if you did an hour of farming, you'd want to kill yourself because it's so hard. 
It's so much hard work. Be like, I wear boots. I wear cowboy boots. I'll be the first one to tell you. I would drive a tractor into a lake. <laughs> I like the feel. They look, may look, my, my, my tuckus look good. But yeah, anyone can wear camouflage. I'm down for it. It's okay, GOP. Yet you have nothing to talk. Fox News, you have nothing to talk about. They're like wasting precious time on their shows just talking about what what was the thing you were talking about? Cooking. Cooking. Oh, yes. They're very upset. Yes. They're very upset that Kamala Harris has a YouTube channel devoted to cooking. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. I know. Uh, it hasn't been updated since 2020. But Vice President Kamala Harris at one point did cooking videos on making cookies, sandwiches, all kinds of stuff. This was very upsetting to one of the pretty bobbleheads on phone news, Julia Banderasinto. That's a made-up name. You just on Friday. She's very upset about this. And Calvin, let's play that clip and hear what she has to say. Right. That would be a huge glass ceiling shatterer. But I don't want to hear about a White House, you know, president uh, cooking <laughs> like that. And especially a woman like I don't cook and I proudly wear that badge. I am not domesticated whatsoever. <laughs> and my kids are pretty much, you know, fending for themselves. Look, Cheryl, what killed me was one of the lines where it specifically said how she impressed Mindy Kaling with her onion dicing skills. And look, I'm not trying to shame anyone whatsoever, but the whole point is, but I'm gonna. why are they trying to make a chef out of someone that just has a couple basic skills in the kitchen? And certainly, why are they trying to do that yeah. with someone who's supposed to be my commander in chief? I don't care if the president of the United States is a good cook or not. And I think this is pandering, obviously, to women. Julie, I'm with you. My sister is a gourmet cook. I got nothing. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. Yeah. I don't really care if she can cook or not. That doesn't connect to me as a woman. Would be great certainly to see a woman in the White House, but I don't <laughs> need you to be cooking a turkey. No. You know what? I me, yow. I, Jane, could talk about this. I'm not kidding you for an hour, breaking down every 10 seconds of this video because there's just so much junk in here. First of all, like, I'm not domesticated. I don't cook. Do you know what domesticated means, first of all? Like, I can cook. And also, she never has said she's a chef. No. She makes sandwiches and, you know, pastas and whatnot. That's, you're just cooking. Just food things. On a website that's four, four years outdated. I mean, do you know why Mindy Kaling was impressed with Kamala's onion chopping skills? I, I have no Because she's Kamala Harris, and it's just fun to say it on a camera. Okay? <laughs> My goodness. Calvin? Well, the two things they point out to are... The segment she did on Mindy Kelly's podcast or whatever, that was when she was running for Senate like eight years ago. Oh, so even older. Yeah. And then the turkey thing, I think, was part of the vice president thing. But it was like, OK, we need to check your mic. Tell us about something. And she's like, oh, OK, I'll tell you about my turkey recipe. Thanksgiving's coming up. And they caught it on the mic because they were testing the microphones. Nothing, and they thought it would be a cute video to share. Nothing to talk about these people. They really don't. They have nothing to talk. And they are and they are paid so much money. They're on a cable news network. And businesses buy ad space to be on those shows. And here are these three women going like, I don't mean to shame. I'm about to. Oh, I'm going to do it anyway. And by the way, tell me if anyone is listening right now. 855-752-4842. If you have historical knowledge of any commander in chief in the history of America who was sitting in the situation room or any other meeting that was highly important in America, and they said, sorry, the alarm just went off. I gotta go, I gotta go take out the the the, the biscuits. I'm sorry, I'm baking today. <laughs> it's Tuesday, it's my baking day. I'm the president and I bake. Sorry, allow the Allow the downfall to happen. I've got a, I've got a souffle to, to take care of. Save the souffle. It's like, no, it's it's cuckoo. It's 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 over. It's it's so silly that it's hard to even give it any credence. But as you said, Greg, this is indicative of how desperately they are searching for something to grab on. And that they can use to smear her. And that's the thing is they're looking for smear tactics. They're looking for scandals when they could be sitting there going, Kamala Harris wants to, she wants to make sure that we, women have the uh, access to abortions. 
We don't agree with that. We believe life begins at conception. You know, like there are so many ways they can just sit there, but that's boring. Right. That's boring. They they well they got to keep it fresh. Exactly. They, they got to keep, keep it fresh to keep the to keep the audience entertained. Fresh like those popover muffins that Rutherford <laughs> B. Hayes was making one day before. Right. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And they get they get to be on television. Well, I want to be on television. I don't say anything of interest. You don't want to be on television. I know. Look at me. No, that's not what I'm saying. It's a lot of hurry up and wait. Yeah. It, it really is. Matt from Germantown listening here in WAUK. God forbid someone is a hobby that's running for political office. Absolutely. Have any have anybody seen the Iron Iron Lady? The movie oh, that yeah. Meryl Streep started yeah. about Margaret Thatcher? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Margaret Thatcher used to cook for her secret security detail. She would have them in her kitchen. How un-American. And she would make them food. <sighs> and yet England did not crumble. And also, here's the other thing, too. The tra- tra- the trad wife thing. <laughs> right. The traditional staying home for your husband, cooking him a meal, being there, whatever, blah, 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 blah. That That malarkey. Why are they not freaking out over the fact that, oh, she's going to, if she becomes the president, she can also have time to cook for her husband and for their kids. Like, stay home, cook, be a domesticated wife. That's what the world needs and have more babies. She's like, I cook. They're like, not good enough. That's the president. You shouldn't be doing that. Well, and the woman who said that, I don't cook. Well, then you're kind of not going along. There were along. two of them who said that. Well, they're not going along with the whole thing about what a good woman does. Yeah. And your network pushes that. Yep. At the very end, that last lady, the one who's like, my my sister's an executive cook, chef. which is, by the way, not a thing, not an executive cook. You are a chef. But also she goes, I'd love to see a woman in the White House, but I like. <laughs> We'd love to hear what you think about this. 855-752-4842. You're listening to Matt Nair on air. Coming to you on the Civic Media Radio Network. Yeah. And welcome back to Matt Mayer on Air. Jane Matt Mayer, Greg Bach, the Calvinator on the board, coming to you from our studio in downtown Waukesha. Join us, call or text. It is the same number, 855 752 Leave a comment on the live stream if you're watching on Facebook, YouTube, and the platform that Elon continues to actively ruin. Uh, speaking of an example of that, he is going to be hosting the former president tonight. And I've already seen the hashtag. Oh, my God. Uh, boycott 8 p.m. or something like that so we'll see what kind of a crowd he gets but elon's got a big following oh he's a huge following so does i mean honestly so does the president the former president it's it's gonna be amazing because it's two men who can't answer direct questions trying to talk to each other about anything well it's just gonna be elon setting him up and is how is this gonna be conducted is it a twitter spaces or they're gonna be like in Probably. person well if it's gonna be a twitter spaces it's gonna be a nightmare i guarantee it. it's gonna <laughs> sound it's gonna sound awful i've listened to twitter spaces they don't whatever audio interface they it doesn't sound good oh gosh well i hope so well, oh, here's oh another, i hope here's another question i have why is this whole thing being done on truth social that's a very you know, good question, It's only Greg the Bach. interview with the guy who owns Truth Social. Why isn't it being done there? Here's a little question for you. That's a very good question. Thank you. That's because Truth Social doesn't have much of a following. Oh, God. I really want to know. God, I would. And no one would. I would give it. to charity to find out their actual numbers. Maybe one day. Maybe one. Oh, I'll read that book. Maybe I will read day. that book in a heart. <laughs> and it'll be. And it'll be. Devin Nunez will try to write it. Like, oh, no, it's fine. You, no, 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 buddy. You're too close. Before the break, we were talking about Fox faux, faux News Channel. <sighs> Pretty bobblehead Julie Bender, Estino, Sinto, whatever, 
on Friday, freaking out that Vice President Kamala Harris at one time had a YouTube channel where she cooked. And it hasn't been updated since 2020, but this is apparently the worst thing that you can do. What a what a horrible example. Yes, it would be amazing to have a woman in the White House one day, but I don't want to hear about a White House president's cooking. Okay. Sure. Cool. I'm I, I'm I'm glad that you really got nailed, nailed down that job at Faux News to be able to talk about this. I'm sure that's why you went to journalism school or wherever you went to school. It wasn't journalism school. Mike in Green Bay listening on WGBW. It's like the right doesn't understand what normal people actually do. Normal people like to do things like cook and laugh <laughs> and show they're human. Yes, Mike, that that normal people. Yes. Yeah. And from Chippewa Falls, listening on WAUK, I don't know where these women come from. Obviously, you don't have to be intelligent to be a news reporter on Fox. Anyone that watches this has to be filled with so much negativity. All they do is whine. The information might do well on As the World Turns Nice One and I mean, they're just like <laughs> one, one thrown glass of Chardonnay away from just... I mean, they all agree with each other, but they're, 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 they're and I don't want to get into the tone of women. Women are going to sound like you sound. Your voice is your voice, but it's just so, it's boring. It's, well, the, you mean that their shows? Yeah. Yeah. Cause they talk about literally nothing sometimes. It's just, you know, Jesse Waters, a man who votes for a Democrat transitions into a woman. How did he not get called up to someone's office? And say, please never say that again. Because I, 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 they, I guess that he gets ratings. He Ugh. says stupid, outrageous things, and he gets ratings, which seems to be the way it goes. What uh, Mar- could we say on this show to get those kinds of ratings? I don't think either of us are that stupid or that nasty. Challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> Mark from Prairie Dusac is on the line. Good morning, Mark. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks. Well, I'm looking forward to, for a cap too. And just wait, imagine the freak out if they start doing the blaze orange ones for, for hunting, because that's what you for deer hunting in the late fall. But let's remember that it wasn't back in the 70s, it was even as early as the 60s. Over there, that's like, I'm a woman where the woman is singing I'm, that I can bring home the bacon, fry it up in a pan, yeah. and never let you forget that you're a man. Yep. But, uh, it, is, it is just that they're coming up with this crap about. Uh, where, you know, that everybody should be able to do it all. My mother got me cooking when I was a kid. I mean, that, uh, yeah. that the stuff for me that she, she would cook, she wouldn't cook squirrels or rabbits that I shot, but I, she'd fry up the trout. That I was <laughs> but she made me, she made me, she made me cook the squirrels and rabbits myself. Yeah. That, uh, it is just. And that's know, how your mother all. failed you, Mark. Up, yes. Apparently so, Mark. That's no, that's lovely that she taught yeah. you that. And, Again, this is just another sign, I think, of how they are flailing around trying to find something with which to smear this ticket. And and they're going to keep they're going to keep throwing spaghetti at the wall until they can finally find something that sticks. Gene from Eau Claire is on the line. Good morning, Gene. Thank you so much for joining us. What did you want to say? Oh, good morning. This is a great show. I have to tell you, I listen every day and it's just outstanding. But uh, Mark did a good job there with uh bacon frying up the pan because I was thinking of that same thing. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And and we fought that for years and years. And it's like, what the devil and these women that go after her, they're just jealous. They know that if you're on the right, if you're a woman, you ain't going anywhere. Mm. And so uh, three cheers for, for the Democrats, for promoting women. And I've heard a lot of men say our country would be a lot better off if a woman would run it. So... That's my two cents for today. Have a great day, and thanks for the great thanks, show. Thanks, Gene. Thank you so much, Gene. We really, really appreciate it. That's very, very kind of you. We try. We try to we do try. the show. We try. Um, Matt from Middleton is on the line. Good morning, Matt. Nick, hey, how are you doing? Hello. Um, I just wanted to comment that it's, it's really crazy that uh, this is the first time in our history where there's a presidential campaign going on, and one of the parties has nothing to offer or nothing to talk about. <laughs> Well, Matt, absolutely. I mean, they could sit down and have a discussion on many policy points that Kamala Harris, Tim Walls, Joe Biden, the Democratic Party have that they totally disagree with. They're completely against. They could have those discussions and bring up points, but they can't because their audience doesn't care about those. Well, and I also don't think they have no policies. So, Matt, if they would bring up, you know, if they would bring up policies that they don't like under the Biden administration, 
they don't have anything to offer to replace it. No. Because their only platform is Trump. Yeah. That's kind of it. But don't worry. Trump's going to come out with a new new uh, uh, medical plans. Right. New economic plan. Right. New everything plan. Everything's going to be great. And they're going to rebuild the wall again. In, in two weeks. And Mexico's going to actually pay for that, too. Our health care, <laughs> national health care, paid by Mexico, people. I said it here first. That is breaking news. Trump said that Mexico will pay for health care. Thank you so much, Matt. Thank you for checking in. Really appreciate it. You can always join us as well at 855-752-4842. Leave a comment on the live stream on Facebook, YouTube, and what used to be Twitter. Catherine and Madison listening on WMDX. Jane, have you ever heard or seen Trump laugh? We've all heard Kamala laugh. We've talked about this before. He only laughs if he's making a joke at someone else's expense. Mm-hmm. At least that's that's the only thing that I have seen. I don't even know if I've heard him laugh. I've seen him smile. I've seen him smile big in front of children, and you're like, oh my gosh, I see... I saw genuine joy in his face, and then it goes away. Oh immediately. yeah, it's a, yeah. Because it almost feels like he sees it as a weakness. I think he does. But I don't know. I, I have to look it up to see a time when he was genuinely laughing, not like a. <laughs> no, you know when he was genuinely laughing huh. when he was alone in the awful office with those two Russians. There's a picture of him. He was laughing. Geesh. News is coming up next. You're listening to Matt Nair on air. This is the Civic Media Radio Network. Good morning and welcome, welcome to Matt Nair on air. Jane Matt Nair, Greg Bach, and Sweet Cal B on the board. Coming to you from our studio in downtown Waukesha. You can always join us. You can call. You can text. It's the same number. 855-752-4842. 855-75-CIVIC. Or leave a comment on the live stream on Facebook, YouTube, and the platform that Elon continues to actively ruin. Very excited to have our next guest join us to talk about education in Wisconsin. Sashen Chetta is here with the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction. Good morning, Sachin. So nice to have you here. How are you? Thanks for having me, Jane. So great to be here. Let's let's talk about the least active legislature in possibly Wisconsin history who just doesn't seem to want to release money that has already been approved. We're just a couple of weeks away from kids being back in class, right? Yeah, I mean, this has been an ongoing challenge with uh, a legislature that, as you recall, during COVID didn't meet for six months and has now got these referendum questions on the ballot tomorrow to say they've got to have control. But over the last many years, we've seen that they're kind of just, you know, unwilling to take action, unwilling to be cooperative. And it's really been a challenge. Um, In this particular case, they agreed uh, on a bipartisan basis uh, with the governor and DPI to um, pass a new literacy law uh, based on the science of reading. We want to really improve how we teach literacy for kids all across uh, the state. We want to make sure the kids know how to read so they can read to learn. And then we have this $50 million. It pays for training, pays for curricular materials, uh, pays for the coaching that uh, teachers need. And instead of releasing that funding, there's $50 million. They've released $300,000 of the 50, so 1.5% so far. They're just sitting on the rest. And it's tied up in an arcane debate about what what the limits of the governor's veto authority uh, is. Is the governor's veto authority on partial vetoes subject to this bill or that bill? It's not something that really affects kids. At the end of the day, we all agree this $50 million should be spent, uh, but they won't release the funding. And they've just chosen once again uh, to be in on a political battlefield, to make schools political battlefield instead of battlefields, instead of just putting kids first and figuring out how we can help serve kids. So essentially, if if I understand this correctly, the things that they are arguing about and are unhappy about have nothing to do with actually teaching our children to read. 
they're they're upset about some procedural thing. It's absolutely a procedural question. You know, this type of bill, can the governor partially veto it? This kind of bill, he can't. What's the limits of his partial veto authority? Has nothing to do with whether or not we all agree that we should make these investments in improving literacy education in Wisconsin. They already passed the bill with $50 million and changing the law. The governor signed that bill. We've begun implementing the bill, but we're leaving school districts high and dry because they don't have the resources now. They need to invest in actually doing the work. Can't do things for free. Everything takes money. They, we want them to buy new curriculum. We want them to train their teachers. We want to make sure those teachers have the coaching that they need. Uh, and now we're not putting forward those dollars. And if they don't give, and this might, you know, these these court cases, these arcane procedural court cases take a long time. If they don't release the funding, the funding will expire. And then we'll just be even more uh, behind the eight ball. We're just a couple of weeks from school starting. We're trying to give school districts uh, guidance, but what we're telling them is we can't promise them the money will ever show up because the legislature won't take this action. That's incredibly annoying. It 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 just yeah. it it really is, and to me, it is yet another example, such an of if things don't go their way, and I'm talking about the Republican legislature. If things don't go their way legislatively, then they go to the courts or they go to these constitutional amendments that are going to be on the ballot tomorrow when thing when they can't get their when people don't support their policies they try to, they just go around it we're just yeah, going to find what, a way to go around it right let's just be clear here this isn't a question about whether we support the policy there's actually bipartisan agreement on the policy this is purely a power exercise about who gets to make the decision at the end traditionally for what 150 years plus of Wisconsin history, the legislature passes a bill, puts money in the bill, governor signs the bill, and then the money gets spent by executive agencies, right? Um, that dynamic has been shifted and changed by Speaker Voss and his allies. They just lost a massive case. They actually lost the case 6-1, and even arguably the one really just had a procedural concern. Uh, so even on the Supreme Court, Right-leaning folks and left-leaning folks agreed that the legislature is overstepping their bounds. That case was on a stewardship funding case, but everybody sees that as the writing on the wall, that this idea that they function like a super legislature, that they have another kick at the can after the governor has already signed or vetoed a bill and taken action, that that's just wrong. It's not really what the Constitution anticipated when they when we put the Constitution into place, when we became um, a republic, Wisconsin, the state, right? And so it's time to change that. In the short term, we can't wait for these political fights uh, to play out. These kids need the help. These teachers need the help. These school districts need the help. And we just need to drive the ball forward. And again, there isn't any doubt. We all agree on what needs to happen, right? This isn't a, a question of whether we disagree about how to improve uh, reading education. This is a question of like arcanely, what is that procedure for spending the money? And can we make it more complicated? Can we make government more bureaucratic? Or can we just go do the things that we need to do? And again, that it's very similar, to, as you pointed out, that to the, the fight tomorrow in the election about these referenda, where we cannot count on this legislature to take action, even in the face of crisis. During COVID, for six months, they didn't even meet, yeah. let alone mm. take action and pass bills. Uh, and again, traditionally, the legislature doesn't meet after March or April in an election year. We understand that's a tradition. But when there's a crisis, you've got to come into session and you've got to do the work. And they chose not to do that. Thankfully, we had Governor Evers, who was willing to work with the, the federal government and, and spend the resources and try to mitigate the worst uh, edges of that crisis. And, and we just can't let that happen again, which is why uh, folks are fighting so hard to, to defeat these constitutional amendments. If you're just joining us, Sachin Chetta is our guest. He's with, with the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction. And we're talking about, at least they're consistent with doing nothing, <laughs> our, our consistently nonproductive Republican-controlled legislature sitting on more funding that our schools need in order to start a new reading curricula, which is just a couple of weeks away. So such and this, this looks like this is just isn't going to happen. So we're going to, we're going to keep teaching the way that we have been teaching before. So, so no, the law is in place. So you have to change uh, how we teach 
uh, reading. You're not allowed to use some of these old uh, methods. You have to go to the new methods. Uh, um, we put the curricula out there. Uh, basically, what it means is that school districts are on their own. They have to find the resources to do this work, to train the teachers, to coach the teachers, to make sure that they buy the curriculum materials, et cetera. Uh, they just have to do it without the additional without the additional help. It's an unfunded mandate uh, from a Republican legislature that, that claims to be against unfunded mandates. Uh, and 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 but but uh, the 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 school districts are not off the hook. They have to do things the way that we're articulating that the law says that they have to be done. The one change that they made uh, is that the first screening is 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 now optional this fall, but the mid year screening and the later screening in the year are not optional. And so it's just uh, we're just doing our best to support school districts uh, any way that we can, uh, but we don't have the funding released, and and we're hopeful that uh, we can convince them to even release a part of that funding so we can try to start drive uh, these resources into local school districts. Oh, such an it's fine. Our school districts are just overflowing with extra money. Your sarcasm is is, is well heard. <laughs> oh. um, as, as people know, there's there's been uh, over a billion dollars of proposed referenda by school districts. What that tells you is that they know these are in rural districts, urban districts, suburban districts. These are in conservative leaning districts, liberal leaning districts all across the state. Uh, public school districts are realizing they don't have the resources to do the things that we're asking them to do to educate kids. Uh, school funding has been flat. Uh, in the last budget, the legislature said, well, you have all this COVID money. We're not going to give you any more money. Uh, it hasn't been enough. We think that we should significantly increase the amount of special ed reimbursement, special education reimbursement that's flowing into school districts. We should invest more in mental health. We should invest more in nutrition. We should make sure that school districts have these resources around literacy education. We are fighting every day. Superintendent Jill Underly, our elected state superintendent who I work for, uh, is fighting every day to try to get those resources into school districts. And we're going to keep doing that. Uh, but but, but telling that story about how they're just sitting on funding, again, I, I, I'm going to say it over and over again. They agree, the Republicans in the legislature agree, this is an important investment. They have passed this funding. The governor signed it, in, signed it into law, but they created a process where now the Joint Finance Committee has to release the funding that they've already passed, and they're refusing to do that. They're refusing to even have a vote on whether or not to do that because they don't want to go on the record on it. So we're hopeful that that dynamic will change as the public hears more and more about this and keeps talking about it all over the state. And that uh, ultimately, too, is the, the the important thing is having the conversation with the community about these topics. And it's so hard to get it across because it's such a – as you just succinctly put it – you know, the money's there. It's voted on. It's ready to go. Let's do it. But the moment you start talking about education, they start thinking about referendum. They start thinking about teachers. They start thinking about all these things like, no, no. And they, and they, they equate it with other points of education. And then they'll be like, maybe we don't want to give the governor a slush fund, which is what the GOP is trying to push. That notion is that the money that's been voted on is a quote unquote slush fund, which it is not. So it's great to have people like you on the show, just basically putting it out there. It's like, it's, it's agreed upon. It's voted on. Let's get it out there and let's help these children and teachers. And, and, and let's be clear. We don't have any discretion on how that money is going to be spent. The mm -hmm. law made it very clear. Here are yeah. the things you can spend the money on. Here's how much you can spend. Um, we don't have anything to do. Like the superintendent is elected by the people of Wisconsin in a nonpartisan election in the spring of the year after a presidential election. She doesn't work for the governor. I don't work for the governor. <laughs> so all of those political fights that are happening, that's fine. Uh, at the end of the day, we're talking about money that the Republican legislature has said should be spent on these things, and then they're not spending it. And that that's kind of the most frustrating thing is watching schools become political battlefields, whether it's this or it's book bans or all these other things that don't have anything to do with helping kids. There is a broad bipartisan agreement in the state. There has been my whole life. I mean, I grew up in Wisconsin. I went to public schools. My kids go to public schools. We all agree, Republicans, independents, Democrats alike, that we need a strong public education system. We need to compete in the global economy. We need to give kids the tools to succeed in life, whatever it is they choose to do, there isn't any disagreement about that, yeah. right? Call it Wisconsin nice, call it our tradition, right? The first state that had a kindergarten. We really believe in these things and we believe them across the board. There's no Republican legislature going into their district and hearing from their own constituents, hey, we don't need resources for our public yeah, schools. Right. That's not happening mm -hmm. anywhere in the state in any of 99 assembly districts. Um, so that's the frustrating thing. If you're just joining us, Sachin Shetta is our guest. He's with the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction. Tony on the live stream had a comment. Would it be fair to say the GOP is holding up GOP-approved funding? Yes. 
Abso- absolutely. And let me just say conservatives were the drivers and they were right. I'm, I'm not ideological about this, right? Conservatives who had concerns about the results that we were getting in literacy across the state, sure. what the levels of third grade reading are, are the drivers of the policy and the funding. They said, hey, this whole language stuff isn't working. The three queuing isn't working. We need to refocus on kind of the traditional methods of teaching uh, reading around, you know, people know it kind of commonly as phonics, phonics. It's a little bit more complicated yeah. than that. But, yeah. but, but, you know, if you, if you think about that old fight, this is driven by conservatives. These are dri- th- these changes, and and I agree with them. This is not about like whether I agree or disagree. I agree they were right. They actually were able to build a bipartisan majority. They were able to work with the governor. They were able to work with a progressive DPI. Um, so absolutely, this is uh, this is them stepping on their own toes. This is something they believe in. And you know the the national the the, the one that people understand is they want a change in border policy. Jim Langford, the senator from Oklahoma, a very conservative guy, proposed a very strong border bill, and he brought Democrats along. This is not where Democrats have traditionally been on these issues. And he brought Democrats along. He built a bipartisan majority. He got a commitment from uh, the president that he would sign the bill. And then Donald Trump came in and said, no, we're not even going to pass our own policy. We'd rather there be a crisis than solve the problem for the American people, for kids, for families, and then we want to use it as a political cudgel. It's exactly the same thing, except in Wisconsin, we're talking about literacy education, which isn't even controversial like immigration right, is, right? right. It's like we're picking a fight over something that isn't controversial just to pick that political fight. And and, and that has to change in our political culture. We really do believe that. Well, I think it, it just reinforces, again, why you want to vote no on those two constitutional amendments tomorrow, because essentially this is just handing more control over dollars to the Republican-controlled legislature. And as we all know, they don't like to interrupt their vacations for anything. (laughs) So if there's a crisis, don't expect that money going out the door. Sachin Chetta has been our guest with the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction. Thank you so very much for your time. Thanks for having me. I look forward to coming back. And I know Dr. Underly looks forward to being on soon. Absolutely. All right. Stay with us. You're listening to Matt Nair on air. This is the Civic Media Radio Network. Welcome back to Matt Nair on air. Jane Matt Nair, Greg Bach, Sweet Galby on the board. Coming to you from our studio in downtown Waukesha. You can join us. You can call. You can text 855-752-4842. Leave a comment if you're watching in the live stream on Facebook, YouTube, and what used to be Twitter. Thanks again to Sachin Chetta with the Office of the State Superintendent Department of Public Instruction. I just, it's for teachers and school administrators and for parents I just can't imagine how frustrating it is, as Sachin so succinctly pointed out. These changes to how we're teaching our kids to read were championed by the Republicans. And now that they're getting what they want, they want something else that's not even part of this educational bill. Nope. It's it's just another way to obstruct, it seems to me, getting anything done. And honestly, if you're just tuning in right now, you've just turned the show on, I would I would encourage you to go to civicmedia.us and I mean listen to all the shows, but listen to the interview we did with Sachin because the thing the point we want to get across is this is a bipartisan bill, voted upon bipartisan, passed bipartisan, agreed on, ready to go. And one small group of individuals inside the legislature is holding it up for quote unquote procedural reasons which is such a bunch of hockey puck <laughs> it's, if, it's if there it's, were if there were bunches it's of those. many of hockey pucks <laughs> it's it's so much malarkey it makes a hockey puck it yes but they are but that is what's keeping our children from having a better education is a quote-unquote procedural debate so go to civicmedia.us click on the shows tab 
find Matt and there on there and you can listen to our show, download it as a podcast, subscribe as a podcast, and you can listen to all our shows. It's a two show. It's a two episode a day drop because it's hour by hour. Yep. But you can listen to the interview with Sachin. You can listen to the interview in the first hour with Rear Admiral retired Joe Seastack yep. about uh, about NATO, about the military, and Project Twenty Twenty Five. But it's a great way to stay in touch with the show and stay in touch with us. So do that. Yeah, that would be great. I didn't mean for that to turn into an advertisement. By the I way, thought you always well done. We'll cut that for a promo, Calvin. Thank you. We're done for today. Um, <laughs> we're going to move on and uh, just wrap things up with the end of the Olympics. Yeah, Olympics came to an end yesterday. I did not watch a whole bunch of it. I did watch. I went to see Kristen and the baby yesterday, mm-hmm. and uh, we had the women's basketball game on. That was was it? A, it was a good game. Uh, five US on five and, or three? On U.S. Three. and France. Okay, because I know they had three on three basketball. I wasn't sure if it was it. Calvin, does anyone? I think it was five on five. Probably. Yeah, three on three ended. I think like Wednesday last okay. week. But yeah, the five on five, which is I don't three v three is a neat little gimmick, but five v five is real basketball. Yeah. yeah. So dang yeah. shots fired. But. Uh, it was just a heartbreaker for France at the very end. I can imagine, but go USA. I know. It was, yeah, I agree with you. It was just, it's been so wonderful to see the women doing so well. It just seems like Amer- U.S. women and women in general have just done, done so well at this Olympics. Oh, my gosh, yes. I mean, it has been a wonderful, wonderful Olympics to watch. And I know, you know I won't go on again about it because this isn't a, a, a women's match, but the, the, the Alcaraz Djokovic match that for me was a very meaningful thing to watch. Um, but I mentioned this on Pat's show. This is the most Olympics I've ever watched in my life. And and this was after I said to you and him. I know. I wasn't going to watch any. It's probably because before I didn't really care or didn't have, like, whether it's access. But you have Peacock and you can watch all this stuff. And I just, I found myself becoming more patriotic than I thought I could ever feel. I felt like I told my wife, I'm like, I really want to hang an American flag in the house or on the, on the house because I watched these young people of all backgrounds. They are of different color, creed, religion, American athletes specifically who go through their own experiences in this country for better or for worse. And they still go to France and they still hold the flag and they scream USA and they're and, proud and they're so proud. And I'm like, that is patriotism. That is a love for your country that, I mean, honestly, I love it. And I'm looking forward to, I mean, I didn't another thought I'd say this. I'm looking forward to winter. Look at you. I know I'm like, <laughs> in a limit. maybe, Hey, this is a message to the higher ups in um, in uh, civic media. I can be your winter Olympics correspondent. Are you volunteering? I'm I'm volunteering that you pay for me to go over there mm-hmm. and pay me to do it. I will be the guy on the ground. I'll I'll dress up in in funny winter clothing. I'll try skiing. I think Mike Clemens have you be, have you beat out for that. You better watch your back, Mike Clemens. <laughs> I'm coming for you. I'm not going to do his job. Oh my God, he's everywhere. He is everywhere. Yeah. He works really really oh, hard. No, Calvin. I will say, um. A combination of social media and the time difference kind of just, I didn't have any reason to watch it. Because you could see it all. Well, because I'm working and right. I see, oh, the women's gymnastic team won gold. And yeah. So then yeah. there's no reason to sit down and watch it when I get the the rebroadcast at home afterwards. Well, and I, I did go back and I watched a lot of things on YouTube if I had missed them, if I had missed them. Yeah. And it, you can still go back, and if oh, you yeah. want to watch some of the gymnastics performances, which again, that those women just blow my mind. I did not catch much live Olympics. I saw a lot of highlights. I saw that the the Kevin Hart, Keenan Thompson wrap up shows every two days was hilarious. To really? Watch. Oh my gosh, it was so funny and uncensored. Don't let kids watch it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I didn't care how I took it in. I just got to take it in, and I and I have the Olympic app, and I was keeping up on the medal count. That's I, great. I'm loving it. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm loving it, baby. That's fantastic. Yeah. Brendan sharing on the uh, live stream. U.S. Women's Soccer won gold. Yes. This, yes. This is what? How many? Or am I thinking of the women's basketball team that's well, won like five years in a row? Women, women, or five times in a row? I, I'm sure. Five right years. now, my friend Caitlin's texting me because uh, she loves women's soccer so very much. I'm. I know you're listening. Uh, that they win the World Cup a lot, and I guess what she told me was that. America, Brazil, and the and the bronze place team didn't even place in the World Cup for the women's 
the last time went through, and it was they were made fun of. They were like, oh, they're not ready for the Olympics. They suck. And the three major teams all placed in the top three of the Olympics. Did you have something less? All right. All right. Uh, sorry, Brendan. We're, we're right up against the wall here. News is coming up next, followed by Todd Alba. Thank you, Greg and Calvin and all of our engineers. Without you guys, nothing works. Thank you most of all for calling and for texting and for listening. It absolutely means the world. I hope you find some joy today and you have the chance to share it. Stay close. You're listening to the Civic Media Radio Network. Have a great day.